Welcome back to the channel everyone, I hope you are doing absolutely well, this is AD back with another video. So today is gonna be the review of the Dot .OS official for the Redmi Note 5 Pro. So without any further ado, let's now get started. So here is my Redmi Note 5 Pro running the Dot .OS official. Let me first show you the about device section before showing you anything else. So going into the about phone, as you can see here is the Android version and it's Dot .OS Droid on time. The Android version is obviously 9.0 Pi, the latest from Google, as you can see here it is. So going back and talking about other stuff, as you can see the .OS version here is version 3.1 official. The security patch is of 5th of June 2019, that's a little bit weird because it's already July and the Rome Havoc OS which I reviewed yesterday had already got the July security patch. But with this build, it's of 5th of June 2019 and I'm sure with the next build it will be updated to July but with this build it's not just synced. As you can see the kernel here it says PERF plus but I'm assuming that this is the plus kernel not perf. I'm not sure because I haven't heard about this kernel until now. I know the plus kernel, it's a really nice kernel and the version here is 4.4.181. As you can see the build date here, it says Thursday, July 4, 2019 and this is the latest build at least at the time of recording this video. And talking about other stuff, as you can see here is the settings menu. It looks really neat and yep, the icons are tuned a little bit over here as you can see the theme looks really neat over here i just love it because the icons are really looking fresh and it's a little bit different from other pyromes that's really nice so talking about digital well-being as you can see here is the digital well-being and the graph is also properly shown over here and talking about security and location fingerprint scanner is working absolutely well let me show you the speed as you can see fast enough Pretty much similar to other Pi rooms, but it works fine. Location also works fine, not an issue with that. Going into display option, all the standard stuff is present over here like the display size, ambient display, double tap to wake is enabled by default, I didn't enable that. And it works absolutely well, but it doesn't give a haptic feedback. Yes, other rooms used to give that, but not with this one. And let us try reading mode, I hope reading mode is there. Nope, I didn't find reading mode over here. Let's see in the customizations. First, let me show you the ambient display settings. As you can see, always on option is there, but it will drain the battery a little bit faster. So going back and talking about other stuff, pocket detection is there over here. You can change the accent color from here, as you can see, and also the UI style. It's on wallpaper based. You can be light or dark based on your requirements. Font can be changed from here. As you can see, a little bit of lag over here, but now works fine. So going back, talking about the customization option, as you can see here are all the customization options that comes with this ROM. Again, neatly arranged over here, looks really neat. Going into the status bar, as you can see all the status bar customizations are here like the battery style, battery percentage, I have already enabled it next to the icon, it's also there in the battery settings. Clock setting is over here and the network traffic monitor is pre-enabled, I didn't enable that. And talking about other customizations, navigation bar, you can customize your navigation bar a little bit from here. and Again, as you can see, quick settings panel can be customized from here. Brightness slider is enabled by default, I didn't enable that. And whenever I hit back, it's directly going back. I mean, it's not coming back to this menu. Let me show you that. As you can see, I'm in recents right now. You can change it to audio style if you want to, but I don't like that. Here it is. As soon as I hit back, it's directly jumping back to the settings menu, not in this menu. Okay, might be a bug over there, but works absolutely well. These are working fine, not an issue with that. Wi-Fi, Blues, etc. Everything is also working absolutely well. I didn't have any issues whatsoever. As you can see, here is the camera app. It's the stock MIUI camera app with the AI mode and it's working absolutely well. HDR is also working fine. Portrait mode, everything is working fine. In a nutshell, there aren't any bugs in the camera app whatsoever. So there are two launchers. As you can see, one is the Pixel and one is the Quick Step launcher. I'm using the Quick Step. You can also use Pixel launcher, not an issue. Here it is. As you can see, here are a couple of standard applications that comes pre-installed with this ROM, except YouTube and Antudo Benchmark, PUBG, all other apps came pre-installed with this ROM, I didn't install any of them, etc. So talking about the music player, as you can see, here is the music player and guys, one thing to note about this ROM is that the sound output is slightly better than other Pi ROMs. Yes, the sound output is loud enough, I should say. And even with the equalizer enabled, the sound output is just awesome from the speaker, the speaker, main speaker, what is there on the phone. In a nutshell, the sound output in this ROM is better than other Pi ROMs. That's definite. Once you install this ROM, you will notice that for sure. Even I noticed that. So talking about the performance, let me show you my last Antutu score really quick. 
so going into the benchmark as you can see i've got a score of 1,14,299 and some people also tell that run and to the benchmark or any other benchmark when the device is cool enough i did the same when the device was cool enough i ran and to the benchmark and i got this score so if you want more details you can pause the screen and have a look at it as you can see you can just pause the screen and have a look at it like this and it's working absolutely well by the way there aren't any issues whatsoever here so talking about the general performance, it's working absolutely well guys, I didn't have any issues or lags, not even minor lags in the system, that's really nice. Even if you keep lots and lots of apps in the memory, there aren't any noticeable lags whatsoever, as you can see all the animations are fluid, there is no any lag whatsoever in the system. Talking about the PUBG performance, PUBG gameplay was also really good in this room, but the graphics were set on balance by default, but you can go all the way up to HD, HD and the frame rate is on high. Still, the gameplay was really nice, smooth enough and the device was not getting heated up like crazy or anything like that but slight heating up issue after extended usage after playing it for like 25 minutes plus. That's the default issue with almost all the ROMs. It's not the ROM issue. In a nutshell, the PUBG gameplay was good in this ROM. There isn't any issue regarding PUBG gameplay. Let me show you the battery life till now. So going into the battery and the battery usage. As you can see, when I first booted the ROM, the device was somewhere around 95% of charge. Later on, I played PUBG for around half an hour, 25 minutes to 30 minutes. There, the battery drain was somewhere around 9 to 10%, guys. And yep, it was a little bit lesser than the Havoc OS 2. You'll not notice a major difference there, but it was a little bit lesser than the Havoc OS. I think 1% or 1.5% less than Havoc OS, and it was really good. So it will differ guys, battery usage will definitely differ from user to user. That's because some users play PUBG on low settings and some play on high settings like me. If you play on low settings, the battery consumption might be a little bit lesser, I'm not sure. But I was playing on the highest available setting, that's HD by default. Later on, I use YouTube, Android Benchmark, etc. And it's not showing up over here. There it was like mixed usage. It drained around, almost around 3% of battery, not more than that. And I just cannot comment about the standby time right now because it's too early to judge the standby time. I already posted a screenshot of Hawako's OS battery on my Instagram stories. I hope many people have seen that. Yes, some of my subscribers have already seen that. So if you want to see that, just go to Instagram. I think so. It's already down now. But I'll post the screenshot of this room too on my Instagram stories. So do follow me on Instagram. It's all about technology 24 into 7. It's appearing somewhere over here. I post all the screenshots over there and also follow me on telegram channel i have created a telegram channel link is in the description i even share the screenshots over there you can just talk to me over there and on instagram i'm mostly active on instagram so this was a quick little review of the dot os official running on the redmi note 5 pro so that's pretty much it for this video guys if you liked it please give it a big thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel for more videos like this also do follow me on instagram and facebook i'm active over there you can ask me any questions regarding tech this is all about technology 27 to 7 Signing off for the moment. You guys have a great day. Peace.